In this video, I'm showing you the five top safety upgrades for the ANIT A8. Come and join me. Hi, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. On this channel, I post videos about 3D printing, gadget reviews and more. So this video is about the five most important safety upgrades for the ANIT A8. So the first safety upgrade we want to install on the ANIT printer is a new power supply. This one has 30 amps and the original one that comes with the printer has only a capacity of 20 amps, which means when you start printing and everything is on heat bed and the hot end, it is a little bit too much for this um, power supply. Uh, you notice that especially during prints, um, every time the heat bed goes on and off, the printer sounds actually a little bit different. And so you, you notice that it is it's really at its capacity limit it. So that's one reason why I want to change it. The other reason is it gets really hot and it doesn't have a fan. Uh, we can apply a fan to this original power supply. Um, I'm showing you this briefly uh, on my other printer here. So have a look here. Um, this is the, the fan installation um, to the original power supply. However, this time I decided to go for a new power supply and see whether that's any better. So the installation of the new power supply is pretty straightforward. We just unmount the old one and then mount the new one. And I'm gonna give you some hints what's different. So let's start. By the way, before we start doing anything, unplug. So we need at least one new hole. Good, so now we're ready to mount the power supply. Should be fine with the new hole now. So that looks awesome. Um, we are now ready to install the cables again. Notice that the new one probably has a different location of the 12 volt uh, connectors and the 220 uh, slash 110 volt connectors. On the original power supply, the connector for 220 volt was on the left side here and 12 volt was on the right side. And with this new one, it's, it's switched around. So you can barely see this, but on this power supply, um, definitely on the right side, we have the three connectors for 220 watt. So I'm gonna install that first and then we're going to check out the 12 volt connectors on the left side where plus and minus are. Yeah, so this is how my um, 220 volt connectors look like. So on the right side we have L, then have, we have N and then we have ground. Um, plus, please double check on your new power supply how the connectors need to be because it might be different and it might be really dangerous to misplace the cables here. Okay, so let's double check if we install everything right and then we can try if the new power supply works. Yeah, that looks good. The moment of truth. Sounds great. Good, so that's it about how to install the new power supply. Let's move on to the next step. So our second safety upgrade is installing MOSFETs. What are MOSFETs? Basically these are digital switches which can switch on and off high currents. And that's what we're going to use them for. So we have the main board which normally powers the hot end and the heat bed and on the main board we have similar digital switches but they are much much smaller and they tend to overheat and sometimes burn through that's what we want to prevent and therefore we install in these digital switches which are driven by the main board and in between the power supply and the main power consumers, which are the hot end and the hot bed. So these two uh, MOSFETs are basically going to be mounted to the side of the frame here. Um, I printed out this little holder and also what I prepared is AG10 or 2.5 square millimeter cables um, to connect the MOSFETs 
to the power supply. Also, I use these nice cable ends um, connectors to make it much, much uh, easier and safer to connect them. So what we need to do first, before we start installing this, we need to disconnect the hot end and also the hot bed from the main board and also use these nice cable end connectors um, on these cable ends to make it much more easier and safer to install this. So now I'm done mounting the MOSFETs to the holder and the holder to the frame. Everything is uh, really, really tough. So let's now connect the power to the MOSFETs and then the heat bed and also the main board and then try it out if everything works as expected. So let's start with the main power cable. It needs to be connected from the power supply to the yeah, first um, MOSFET and then we are going to connect the second MOSFET using the shorter wires and then wrap up um, with the rest of the cables. So from the power side everything is wired up now, I'm going to connect the control cables now to the corresponding uh, outlets on the main board, so the main board can control the MOSFETs and switch on the bed and also the hot end. Yeah, so everything looks nice now, um, it should be working, so I'm gonna give it a try by connecting the power. Yeah, and I'm just going to do... Um, in the print quick settings menu, I'm going to do a preheat PLA just to see if everything is working. And we can see this and check it on the display of the printer here. So it seems that the hotbed is heating up and also the hot end is heating up very nicely. So step number three is to install a mainboard cover which holds a fan to cool down the stepper motors and the overall mainboard. That is um, a two-side thing, so it's preventing you or it's protecting the mainboard from overheating, it's protecting the drivers from overheating, so it will on the long term, even if you, especially if you print for a longer time, will improve the print quality. Also, it will prevent um, something from burning through and generating fire. So it is a combination of a safety upgrade and also uh, yeah, a general quality upgrade and protecting your main board. So let's install that. Uh, we need four uh, M3 by 40 screws to mount it to on top of the main board. And then we have a 50 millimeter fan by Sanon, which is a high quality fan, which uh, is supposed to be silent and mount that, connect power to the main board and then we should be done. So I decided to steal the power from the MOSFET above here um, because it was actually quite hard for me to get to the power connector on the main board and I didn't want to touch that because it's anyway maybe a little bit of a weak spot um, of the main board. So let's see if it works. And it seems to be working fine. So as the next step we should have a look at the, the cable connector that connects power to the heat bed. And also I have an extension or an upgrade, um, which is a cable holder for that cable. So on my original ANET printer, there was only one cable for um, plus and one cable for minus going to the heat bed. And that was basically a weak spot. So also the connector had to run all that power and all that current through two connectors. So, and now they have improved this by using four cables and also they try to prevent um, a cable break by yeah, hot gluing 
the connectors cable ends a little bit. Um, what we are going to do uh, in this case, because I think in general this connection should be good, um, still I want to use this cable holder which is going to be mounted under underneath the hotbed. Um, it's going to run the cable to the side and the reason for that is because of the heat bed moving along this path all the time uh, and this is pretty loose. Um, I want to have a clear path for the cable to the side to not get stuck underneath the frame or in between yeah, the slider and uh, the motor and also that will reduce the amount of stress to the connector because of the cable constantly moving. This holder is going to hold the cable in place and also the connector will not move anymore. So to save some time, um, I'm not going to mount this right now. Um, this is something I'm going to do when I remove the heat bed the next time. So let's go right into the next step, which is thermal runaway protection. Um, that means we are going to flash the Marlin firmware onto the mainboard. Um, instead of using the stock firmware, the Marlin firmware has a feature that will protect you from thermal runaway. Thermal runaway is happening when your mainboard thinks that the temperature of your hot end or the heat bed is still low um, and uh, some, something might be going wrong with the temperature measurement and the thermal runaway protection um, yeah, thinks about the time it normally takes to heat up the heat bed or the hot end uh, when it starts powering it up and when it doesn't see the temperature move up um, after a certain amount of time it will just stop the power and so protect um, overheating of the hot end or the hot bed and then you of course you need to check your sensors there might be some cable broken sensor might be defect so that's the basic protection that the firmware delivers and also this step is explained in this video up uh, here um, so click the link if you want to get to uh, know how to install the latest version of the Marlin firmware onto this printer. I think it's a very necessary step at least for the runaway protection and also the Marlin firmware will get you a lot of more features which we cover in the next videos. For example, bed leveling, support for sensors to level the bed and much more. So stay tuned for those videos. And I think that's it for now about the five most important safety upgrades. If you like this video, please hit the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. And I hope we see each other next week on this channel for a new video about 3D printing, gadget reviews and more. Bye bye, have a good week.